Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will have quick and brief introduction to Python, which will include both high level and programming level information. So here is the official definition of Python programming language. Python is a high level general purpose programming language. Its design emphasis is core readability with the use of significant indentation. Python is dynamically typed and garbage collected. You might have come across this definition quite a lot if you are learning Python. But many times people actually don't know what these words mean. And often these questions are usually asked in interviews. Like why is Python a dynamically typed language? How the garbage collection in Python works? Or how Python is a high level language? So let's decode these statements to understand what does this mean. Python is dynamically typed which means that the variable types in Python code are determined and checked at the runtime rather than during compilation. This gives the programmer advantage where they don't have to declare the variable data type before using it. Now Python is dynamically garbage collected, which means Python has automated garbage collection. It has an algorithm to deallocate any object which are no longer in need. After learning about Python language, now we will dive into basic concept of Python. Generally, we have two IDEs which are used while working with Python. One is PyCharm and the second one is Jupyter Notebook. We will learn and work with Jupyter Notebook today in this video as it is more preferred while working with data analytics or data science. If you want to learn and explore PyCharm, please comment in comment section and we will add tutorial of using PyCharm. Today in this video, we will learn about below details in Python. We will start with introduction to Python using Jupyter Notebook, followed by understanding different data types to work in Python, followed by variable declaration and value assignments to them. And finally, we will learn about different operators in Python. So let's go. As you can see my screen, I have opened Jupyter Notebook and created a folder Python Tutorials. I will create a new Python 3 file from the drop down menu New on right hand side. Once I create a new file, a new page is opened. You can see in the new page there are three bars. The topmost bar is the title bar, followed by menu bar and just below menu bar there is task bar. In menu bar, we have list of properties on the file menu. We can create a new notebook using new notebook option under file menu. We can open an existing Python file using open option. We can create a copy of existing Python file using make a copy option under file menu. Save as option is used to save the Python files. Rename option can be used to rename the open Python file name. Save and checkpoint option which is under file menu is also a very important option. Whenever we are developing any code and we want to continue after taking a pause or if we have 100 steps of code and we want to run or change the code after 71st step, then you can save the checkpoint at 70th step and start testing after the checkpoint. We have a print preview option which provides a user an option to preview how the output will look like when we print the Jupyter file. Under download as menu, we have different options how we can download the Jupyter Notebook files. The most commonly used download options is HTML that is .html extension as the downloaded web pages are easy to share. For making citing and reports and projects, latex file or .txt files are also used. .py, python, notebook, .jpy, nb and pdfs are also very common type of downloads. Under edit menu, we have cut cells, copy cells, split cells, etc. These options are used to alter and modify the cells in the python file. This long rectangular bar is known as cell where we can write code or headings or text. We can also add new cells in the Python file by using the plus symbol in the task bar. The same option you can find under insert menu. Then we have view menu. Using options under view menu, we can alter the view of the Python file. 
As mentioned before, using insert menu options, we can also insert cells above or below of the selected cell. Under cells menu, you can see we have lot of options like run cells, run and selected run cells, run all, etc. You can see we have multiple options under kernel drop down such as interrupt, restart, reconnect, etc. Now you must be wondering what are kernels? So kernels in Python are process that runs independently and interact with JupyterLab. This is the program that runs and intercepts the user codes in Python. You can use save button in the taskbar to save your code. You can name or rename your notebook by just clicking over the name in the title bar. We will learn next about different data types in Python. Hence, I am renaming the file as data types in Python. Now the name of the file is changed. We have already seen that using the plus option in taskbar adds a new cell. Similarly, using scissor icon cuts the selected cell. The right of the scissor icon is the copy icon. It copies the selected files and the next icon is for pasting the copied or cut cell. You can use the arrow in the taskbar to select the cell above or below. Now let's try printing the universal first word in programming language. That is, hello everyone. You can run the code using the run sign in the taskbar or you can use shortcut that is control plus return key. You can use a stop command in taskbar to stop the running code. And you can restart the current running kernel using the curved arrow button right to the stop kernel button. The drop down in taskbar gives you option to select type of Python cells. The current selection is code type. You can change it to markdown or heading which you can see in the drop down. The markdown option makes the cell as plain text. When you run the cell with markdown, the output doesn't run any command. It works as plain text. You can also select heading under the code dropdown. By default, the heading is set to H2 as per the HTML standard. We can also change the font size of heading by using HTML heading setter by providing attribute H1, H2 to H6. Here we have shown both H1 and H3 as an example to show you the difference. This was the basic overview of Python using Jupyter Notebook IDE. We will further see details and introduction to Python language. Let's discuss now what are the different data types we can use in Python. Starting with integer. The first basic data type is integer. Any numbers without decimal is called an integer. We can check the data type of any data using type function as you can see in the screen. Another data type which is commonly used is decimal numbers. These are called float. Any integer numbers with decimal points is qualified as float. When we check data type of decimal number, it comes as float as output. The next data type is string or character type. String can be defined as anything or any data declared within double or single quotes. If we check the data type of string, it will come as str. Another commonly used data type is boolean. Boolean data type has only two values, that is true and false. As you can see, we are not using true and false under double quotes. If we check the data type of boolean, it comes as an output bool, which represents it is a boolean. Python is case sensitive and hence when we write true or false with small letters, it gives us an error saying name is not defined. Now we will explore variables in Python. How can we declare variables and assign values to them? While working with any programming language, we always need to work with data. To save the value of data, we declare variables in the programming language. Same for Python, we declare variable in Python to save data. So whenever we create any variable in Python, we assign some value to it. We are here creating variables var and assigning value 300 to it. Here the variable name is var 
variable value is 300 and the variable value is assigned using equal to sign which is called assignment operator. This is used to assign values to the variable. If you want to check the value in variable, we can check by printing the value using print function print bracket open var bracket close and the output we can see is 300. Whenever we create any variable, Python creates a memory location. Then it saves the assigned value in that memory location. Now if we change the value of the variable from 300 to 71 and print the value, the output will be 71 because the value was updated in the memory location used by the variable. As discussed previously, Python is dynamically typed. That is, the data type of variable in Python is determined during runtime, not at the compilation time. Since we have assigned integer, the data type of the variable will be integer. Now if we restart the kernel and try printing the value of the variable, we will get an error saying the name variable doesn't exist. Because when kernel was restarted, the memory location assigned to the variable was cleared. Now we have to reassign the value to the variable to get new memory location. Similarly, we can assign string values to the variable as well. As you can see in the screen, we have assigned variable 1 with string value and. Now we will print the value of variable and check the type of the string variable. Further, we will assign boolean value to the variable and then print and check its data type. Now we will see different operators in Python. Firstly, we have arithmetic operator in Python. There are basically four arithmetic operators in Python, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Firstly, we will see addition. Addition is denoted by plus sign between integer or float numbers. For example, 10 plus two and the output is 30. Subtraction is used and denoted by minus sign between numerical values. For example, 10 minus 20 and the output is minus 10. Next is multiplication. This is denoted by asterisk symbol between numerical values. That is 10 asterisk 2 and the output is 20. Finally, we have division. Division is denoted using forward slash character between numerical numbers. For example, 10 slash 2 and the output is 5.0. The output of division is flow data type. And if we don't want the output of division to be flow data type, we can use two front slashes between the numerical values and the output won't be a decimal. We have another arithmetic operator in Python which is exponential. To get exponential values, we can use double asterisk sign between two numerical numbers. Let's see with an example. Here we have written 10 asterisk asterisk 2. This means 10 power to the 2 or 10 multiplied by 10. Hence the output is 100. If we want to calculate the square root using Python, we can use 100 asterisk asterisk bracket open 1 by 2 bracket close and the output is 10 that is the square root. Secondly, we have assignment operator. We have seen previously how the assignment operator works. Assignment operator is actually an equal to sign and is used to assign values to the variable. The next operator in Python is comparison operator. We have basically four types of comparison operator. First is comparison equals. Two values can be compared with each other using two equal to signs. If the values match each other, the output is true, else it will be false as you can see in the screen. Values of variable A is 100 and the value of variable B is 200. When we compare A equals equals B, then the output comes as false. But when we change the value of A and B both to 100, then the output comes as true. The next comparison operator is not equals comparison operator. It is used by exclamation followed by equal sign. As you can see in the screen, 
the value of variable a is 100 and value of variable b is 100. When we put not equal to sign, the output is false as the value is same. But when we update the value of b to 100, the output is not true as the values of a and b are not equal. The third operator is less than operator. For example, value of a is smaller than b and we compare the value of a is less than b, then the output is true as you can see in screen. And the next operator is more than sign operator. When the value of a is less than the value of b and we compare a is greater than b, then the output is false. The next type of operator in Python is known as logical operator. Logical operators are operators which are used to join multiple expressions together. Python only has two types of logical operators. Let's learn about them with example. Firstly, we will discuss AND operators. AND operators only provides output as true when the output of all the expressions are true. If any one of the expression output is false, then the output will be false. For example, we have the variable a, b and c. And the assigned value of them are 900, 200 and 300 respectively. Now we will compare if a is greater than b and b is less than c. The output will be true because a is greater than b and c is greater than b. Now if we set a as less than b and b is less than c, the output will be false. So even if b is less than c is true, the expression of a is less than b is false, hence the output would be false. Now we will learn about one more logical operator that is OR operator. OR operator provides the output value as true even if only one expression is true. That is, if all the other expressions are false but only one expression is true, the output will become true. For example, using the same variable values, we will compare a less than b or b is less than c. The output will be true. Even if the value of a is greater than b and the output of first expression is false. Now we have a good basic working knowledge in Python. In further videos, we will learn about arrays, lists, tuples, dictionaries, and functions in Python. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. You can reach out through comment section if you have any question and concern, and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you. Have a good day.